On day one, I spawned in as a tiny spider in a lush forest. I immediately noticed my family hiding away in fear. Huh? Guys, why is everyone hiding? Oh goodness, my boy, no! As my mother yelled, the ground beneath me started rising, lifting me away from the forest floor. Mom! Dad! Son, jump! I... Uh, I'm scared! Because of my fear, I was brought upward. And to my horror, I wasn't in a forest at all, but a terrarium in a laboratory. Hello, little spider. You are my next destiny subject. <laughs> what? No! But he picked me up and placed me into a machine. What are you doing? It began to activate, filling up with a burning potion. Ah! Because of this, I was mutated into a spider dragon. It worked. It actually worked. With this successful potion, I am closer than ever to finishing my experiment. And when it is done, everyone will bow before me. Now, I don't need you or any of these pests anymore. What? No. Mom! Dad! But it was too late. The scientist walked forward and smashed the terrarium to pieces, killing my family. No! With the press of a button, I was sent into darkness! Ah, ah. I landed in a terrifying tunnel. That scientist, who would do that to someone? I then looked forward and realized I was on a conveyor belt being sent to my death. No, 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 no. I I tried to outrun the belt, but it was too fast. No, I'm gonna fall. Out of nowhere, I was picked up by something. It scooped me up and left me to safety before spitting me back out. Ugh. Wait, a mutated frog? Ah, what are you? Oh man, I thought you were food. Ugh, you're lucky I don't eat weird stuff. Uh, wait. I followed the frog only to see that he lived in some sort of trashy little home. Wait, no, please help me. I was a normal spider and now I'm this and my family, they're gone. I guess you're Dr. Zohar's latest creation. And from the looks of things, you're his first success in combining two different creatures. Which means his experiment to make the perfect species is now beginning. That's not good. I can't believe this. He took my family away from me just for an experiment. In my anger, I unleashed a power I didn't know I had, causing the conveyor belt to break. Whoa. Because of this, we heard a scary robot mech entering the room. Scanning for faults. Commencing area sweep. Look what you did, you idiot! You lured one of Dr. Zohar's robots! Without hesitation, the frog hopped towards a crack in the wall, leaving me. Wait, uh, hold up! On day three, from high up in the ceiling, I noticed that we were above Dr. Zohar's main lab. Wow! Hey, stop following me! It wasn't long until we both saw an exit. We both rushed towards the door, but something caught my eye. It was a fang, very similar to mine. What is this? this you really are an idiot oh my dear ignoring the frog i grabbed the fang and because of this i felt a surge of strength within me causing my fangs to grow whoa is this fang connected to me as i stood in awe on the table alarms started to blare throughout the lab is something trying to escape oh no i leapt off the table making a break for the exit and finally making it outside whoa the world it's breathtaking i then heard a familiar voice crying out Help! huh following the cries led me to a lakeside waterfall 
That's where I saw the mutated frog was being cornered by a mech. Confirm. Experiment 43 is still alive. We'll eliminate. I thought back to being too scared before. Not taking the jump. Not again. Hiya! Where are you going? Uh, saving you. The mech used the opening and blasted me against the wall. Ah! It was about to take me down. But a new power surged within me. And I unleashed a powerful bite? Whoa! I hurt the mech so bad that it began to malfunction and ran off into the forest. Whoa, did I just do that? Whoa, man, you're weirdly stronger. And uh, uh, thanks for saving me, or whatever. Look, that doctor is planning something, something bad. I need to know what it is before he hurts any more creatures. Why do you care anyways? You escaped, just go live your life. That scientist killed my family and I can't let him hurt anyone else with what he's planning. Ugh. Fine, Mr. Hero. Follow me. I followed the frog through the underbrush until we reached a hidden area in the forest. <sighs> Look, you saved me, so I owe you one. Mr. Fur, he's who you're looking for. Mr. Fur? Who's that? He was Zohar's first ever creation. First one to be made and tested on. Last I saw him was when he escaped to the flower forest. Find him and you'll find your answers. On day five, my search for the flower forest led me to the edge of a modern looking town. Huh, maybe someone here knows where the forest is. They all seem friendly. A spider? No. A dragon? What is that thing? Listen, I need help to... The man didn't care and ran up to me trying to crush me. Ah! Hey, stop that! I began racing through the streets as the town erupted into chaos. Monster! Mutant! No, no, you're wrong. I I'm not a monster. But they wouldn't listen. And the horde of people chased me around a corner where something pulled me away. Whoa! Wh wh where'd it go? I looked around at my new surroundings, which was a hidden torchlit room. And in it had a group of talking vegetables? I am so confused. Rightfully so, young creature. Like us, you were not welcomed by the humans. I followed the vegetable leader as he brought me to a window. For a long time now, we've had to remain hidden ever since the humans arrived. Our town was once a small, peaceful village, but then they came and took it over, modernizing it and using my people as food! Why are you telling me this? Because I have ears all over, and I know of your quest to find the flower forest. You help us, and I will show you the way. On day six, I followed the vegetable leader through a tunnel that led to a street. There, he showed me a building larger than all of the rest. Okay, no pressure. It's too risky for my men to enter, especially unarmed. But we have weapons that are kept deep within that building, locked in a vault. If you go and move the centerpiece, we'll take it from there. Please, we need this for our cows. I started to walk towards the street, but just then, more people started to walk by. Whoa, okay, I have to stay hidden. I patiently waited for the right moment to run into the building. And once inside, I saw a long corridor and at the end of it was the vault. But while making my way towards it, I overheard a conversation. You see that creature in town today? Yeah. My guess is that crazy scientist made it. He's still obsessed with inventing shape-shifting or whatever. Man, that guy's insane. Wait, shape-shifting? The two finally walked out of sight, leaving a clear path to the vault. I ran up and slipped through a tiny crack, making it inside. Stored all around me was medieval weaponry and the centerpiece. They want me to move this? Okay. Ugh. Yes, yes, you've done it. Everyone, weapon up! 
they all jumped up from the tunnel, pouring into the vault and grabbing the weapons. The vegetable revolution has begun! On day seven, chaos erupted through the town. There were vegetables running in complete rage everywhere. You kicked us out, ate our people. Well, look at us now. It was definitely a sight to behold with countless vegetables taking their revenge. This is what I get for trying to eat healthy! The people fled in fear as they were chased out. The town, you guys did it. The town is yours. Yes, we did. Finally, we have won. Man, it must be nice being around your people having a home? I wonder what that feels like. You have done us a great service. Now, eat. One of the vegetables ran up to me. Show our hero here exactly where the flower forest is. I followed the beat through a path in the mountains that led right up to the enchanted flower forest. Everything was so beautiful, except for one cave on the mountainside. It was dark, muddy, and ominous yeah well here you go i'm gonna go now or like whatever <laughs> uh thanks i think i know where to go from here um hello is anyone here what do you want mr fur is it someone told me that you might know more about dr zohar i see you're not normal Come with me. We traveled within his cave and into his makeshift lab. Zohar's been planning his so-called experiments for years and years in order to perfect shape-shifting. That word, uh, again, shape-shifting? What does it mean? It's when a creature of any kind has the ability to change into what it best sees fit, whether it be a snake, a little tiny ant, or something much, much worse. If he was able to finally succeed in merging two different species, a spider and a dragon, for example, then he isn't very far from accomplishing his end goal. Which is what? His takeover. We can't let him get away with this. I mean, someone has to stop him, right? Maybe that someone is you. Our conversation was quickly interrupted by a rumbling noise. Uh, what was that? I don't know. Suddenly, a ghoulish creature came bursting through one of the cave walls. Um, what is that thing? <laughs> ran in and slammed the rat against the wall. Hey, knock it off. My poisonous bite seemed to stun it, but it didn't do much. Hey, up here. On days nine to 10, I ran with Mr. Fur until we reached a room with a balcony. There in all of Fur's junk were dragon wings. I then thought back to what happened in Zohar's lab. Could this be? What are you doing? I grabbed the wings, causing me to upgrade. My wings grew much stronger, and I now had even more hearts. What? How did? Just then, the horrifying creature came storming into the room. Quick! I grabbed Mr. Fur and leapt off of the balcony, flying him safely to the edge of the flower forest. Woo! Whoa, these wings, they're amazing. That's it. What do you mean, what's it? When I escaped Zohar's lab, I took supplies, hoping to find a cure for my mutations. Okay, look, how is this important right now? Zohar uses specific ingredients to create the potions used on us. And every time you find one of yours, I amplify my abilities and grow even stronger. Oh no, the ghoul, it's getting closer. Come on, I think I know somewhere safe that we can go. On days 11 to 12, we arrived back to the hidden area of the forest and saw that the mutated frog had already built himself up a swampy home. Ah, uh, you actually found him? Ah, uh, I mean, <laughs> great. <laughs> Wait, what? You're still alive? Yeah, I'm fine. Just been hiding away. So, nothing's changed. Um... 
I can see that this is a bit awkward. I'll just be over here. <laughs> I decided to focus on my own space and begin constructing a nest that would fit both of my spider and dragon side. After some effort, I stepped back to admire my work. Dr. Zohar, his plans are no joke. But what does he want to transform into? Suddenly, a loud shout grabbed my attention. What the? I rushed over to see that Mr. Fur had built up a lab for himself. And out in front of it was a baby lion. Hey, what are you doing in the forest? Please don't hurt me. I don't want to cause any trouble at my home. It's so horrible. Wait, what? On days 13 to 14, the lion cub and I ventured into his desert home. But once we emerged from its tunnel, we saw the whole lion civilization was under attack. Horrifying ghouls roamed around, attacking the lions mindlessly. And above them loomed Dr. Zohar himself. Don't worry, your sacrifices are for science, except your new lives. I watched in horror as mechs caged some of the lions, while the others that resisted were turned into deadly ghoul mutations. That's where those ghouls are coming from. And he's beginning to test on larger species? That's not good. No! They're taking my dad! The lion cub began to run towards the cages. Hey, stop! It's too dangerous. Look, I promise I'll get your father back, but you need to go back to my base. The cub hesitated, but turned around and ran back out through the tunnel. With that, I used my new wings to soar above the destruction and follow where Dr. Zohar went. On days 15 to 16, after following the direction of the scientists, I was led right back to the lab I was created in. I followed the distant roars of the lions and came across a creepy room. And there lied a book. As I read it, I realized that it was about how I was created and all the ingredients that were used. There's only three more. The sacred spider spinner, a deadly dragon egg, and the connected heart? What is that? What the? I looked and saw that the banging was coming from a blocked off doorway. Whatever is behind there sure doesn't seem friendly. I continued on following the lion's roars until I saw that right in the center was the lion cub's father trapped in a testing tube. There you are. But before I could break him out, something hit me away. Ah! I looked up. And there he was, Dr. Zohar. You, my first successful creation. I know what you're planning, and I'm not gonna let you get away with it. I ran up and tried to bite him, but he easily swatted me back down. Ah! What I am planning is perfection. The power to transform into any given creature at any moment. That power will be played. I will be looked after. No, you'll be feared. <laughs> what is wrong with that? Everyone has always treated me like a joke. Put a ceiling over my head. But with this, I'll prove them all wrong. I won't even be bound by my own species. And they will all fall under my rule. He walked over to the machine in front of the lion and turned it on. No, what are you doing? Stop! We fought as he swung around his massive arm and threw all kinds of potions at me. His movements were smart and nothing I did seemed to work on him. With another powerful hit, he knocked me back again. Once I reach my full potential and transform into the ultimate beast, I'll crush anyone who opposes me. My yo! The machine unleashed a beam that zapped the lion. No! Because of this, a vial dropped out. Now, for the first human test. He drank it, which transformed him into a lion. But it was only temporary as he transformed back. It worked! Now, to make it permanent, and you won't be able to see it! The doctor charged at me again, 
but a sudden sonic boom from below caused the floor to collapse. Ah! Ah! I landed in some sort of skulk tunnel? Ew, what are you? Huh? I looked around only to see a different spider in the tunnel with me. Ah, uh, come on, you're not a warden spider? Warden spider? No, I'm a spider dragon. Yeah, and an ugly one. The spider began to walk away. Hey, wait, why did you save me back there? Because, pal, I got great hearing. That's why. And I heard the word spider coming from up there and thought that you were one of us. Boy, was I wrong. We then reached a crevice where he effortlessly swung across it. Whoa, I don't even have webs yet. Wait, the spider spinner. Hey, uh, do you know about the sacred spider spinner? Dude, quit following me, all right? You're invading my space. Yeah, I know about it, but like you're kind of creeping me out right now. Look, I'm sorry, okay? I just really need it. The fate of the world depends on it. Right. Oh. Totally. Okay, ugly spider thing. Uh, follow me. Wait, is that a yes? I kept following him until we reached an opening that revealed a vast warden spider ancient city. On days 22 to 26, I made my way to the heart of the ancient city to stand before the elder warden spider. What an ugly spider. Ugh. I'm not ugly. Look, I've come here for the sacred spider spinner. I need it. <laughs> Only the strongest spiders are granted the sacred spinner. Why do you think that we watch over it? And clearly you are no normal spider. Yeah, to be honest, I don't even really know what I am either. But I do know that I need that spinner and I'll do anything to prove that I deserve it. Is he telling the truth? Is he challenging us? He must face the trials of eight. He thinks that he's better than us? Silence! Come with me! Following the leader, I was led to another cave with an expansive track course. What defines a spider's power is their speed and strength. Our trial, the trials of eight, tests just that. If you want the spider spinner, then you must defeat our best on our home turf, which will be impossible. Fine, I accept. On days 27 to 29, I lined up at the starting line, surrounded by other warden spiders. The first two that cross the finish line will move on to the next trial. But first, show us your speed. Oh yeah, baby! Beat that ugly spider! He sucks! Go! The race went underway as the warden spiders quickly dashed ahead of me. The course was a mix of terrains where each one of the other spiders used their webs to pull ahead, but also to slow me down. Hey, knock it off! They could even swim through certain sections that were filled with lava. These guys are so strong. I was falling behind, struggling to even keep up in last place, but I can't give up. I just need to get at least second place. Yeah, what a spider wanna be. Finally, I could see the finish line where I saw a spider had just swung across. First place! I noticed that the other ones, though, were struggling. Now's my chance! I leapt up into the air, using my wings to carry me across and secure second place. Man, that was tough. I barely even passed. You got lucky this time, but luck won't save you in the final trial. On days 30 to 32, the first place spider and I were put inside of the spider city's arena. The final challenge is to prove one's strength. Before us, cage doors opened to reveal a menacing warden beast. The one who defeats the beast in combat wins! The beast charged forward immediately, clawing into both of us. Ah! We both tried to fight back with everything that we had. The warden spider's webs and sonic booms were doing nothing, and neither were my bites. He's just too strong. He even burrowed down to dodge our attacks and came right back up and set me against the wall. I was brought down to low 
apart. It then turned towards the warden spider and was about to kill him. No, stay away from him. With all of my remaining strength, I ran up and pushed the warden beast, standing in between the two of them. As the beast charged again in anger, it was suddenly launched backwards into its cage. Enough! Well, it seems like we both lost. No, you have proven yourself. Wait, what? But I didn't defeat it. While speed and strength make a great spider, it is bravery and selflessness that makes a great person. You've shown me that by saving a fellow spider. Putting yourself in front of him like that? Please, take the spinner. Falling into the arena was the sacred spider spinner. And when I grabbed it, I upgraded. I gained five more hearts and could now shoot out my own webbing. Awesome. On days 33 to 35, I swung into my base to see a small group of lion cubs. You guys made it back safely. Yeah. So where's my dad? Look, I couldn't save him. Not yet. But don't worry. I'm going to do whatever I can to reunite you two by stopping that scientist. That crazy scientist. What he's doing? It's just wrong. I know, but let me worry about him. I went to work on building them their own desert lion den. Oh, wow. Thank you. When I first saw you, I, I really thought you were a monster. But you're actually the complete opposite. Yeah, thanks. I then noticed that Wart was alone, overlooking the nearby woods. Hey, What's going on? It's just that seeing all that you're doing, helping others, facing the person that turned us into monsters, makes me think about all the decisions I've made. Well, you know, it's never too late to change. Well, I think it is. I was only a baby frog when I found out I was just a failed experiment. But it was Mr. Fur who saved me. He wanted to find a way to fix us. You know, turn us back to a normal rat and a frog. But I had accepted what I was, a piece of trash. So he made his escape while I hid away like a coward, watching countless other experiments suffer and die. I regret not doing something, not caring. Look. You may think that it's too late, but I think it's never too late to change who you are. Just then, I realized, where is Mr. Fur? On days 36 to 39, I looked around the base and went into Mr. Fur's home lab, only to see that he wasn't there, but instead, a mysterious tunnel leading outward. I better follow it. I did, until I found myself facing a large government facility that was on fire? What happened here? Using my webs and wings, I scaled the walls and flew over to get a better view. The facility was overrun with a bunch of the ghoulish creations. Dr. Zohar must be here. I need to be careful. Finding a way in through a bunker doorway, I spotted him at the end of the hall. He was grabbing some strange government equipment. Yes. This is it, the final piece for my experiment. Now, to assemble everything. Now go, clear up this place and leave no survivors. He then stormed out of the facility. Oh no. Suddenly, I heard a yell echoing from a nearby hallway. And gunfire? Stay down, you freak. I rushed over and saw a government agent fighting one of Zohar's ghouls. And thankfully, he took it down with one last gunshot. Hey, are you okay? Ah, another monster. Wait. The agent panicked and started firing at me. Ah! I flew around and used my new webs to quickly restrain him. Look, stop. I'm not going to hurt you. Sorry, it's just you look. Like a monster? Yeah, I know. We then heard a group of ghouls coming towards the noise of our fight. Quick, in here! We ducked into a separate room, narrowly escaping the patrolling monsters. That evil scientist Zohar, 
He came here and destroyed this entire place just for our fusion core. All the people that worked here, my friends, they've all turned into those monsters. I'm so sorry, Zohar. He created me too. And if we don't stop him, his plans will hurt a lot more people. Before, we thought he was just crazy. <laughs> but after he took one of our dragon eggs, we saw how dangerous he was becoming. So, we hid the other one. Wait, a dragon egg? I need that. It could be the key to stopping him. The agent nodded and led me into a surveillance room where monitors showed various areas of the facility, but they were all overrun. The egg was hidden away in a temple far away from here. You'll need that tablet to locate it, but that room is on the other side of the facility. And those ghouls aren't going to make it any easier, but I have to try. Good luck. I flew out and started to move as quietly as I could across the facility. The government has fallen. You might be our own. On days 45 to 47, I began to sneak through the halls. I've got to be extra careful. If more than one of these guys group up on me, I'm done for. Then, just as I was about to turn a corner, ah, that was too close. It wasn't long until I reached the room that was holding the tablet. There it is. I ran up and grabbed it, but this caused alarms to blare throughout the facility, signaling my location to every single ghoul. Oh no. Quickly, I used my webs to seal the entrance to the room, but they all arrived and began to slash at the webbing from the other side. I need a way out of here. Now, a vent was high up in the ceiling above me. Perfect. I flew up and bit it open, slipping through just in time. On days 48 to 52, the beeping tablet led me to a secluded tropical island marked with a massive deadly skull. They couldn't have chosen someplace easier. I flew closer, and as I did, there were platforms that crawled up the skull, and the doorway was opened? Someone else is here. Cautiously, I went inside when a loud alert sounded. Suddenly, I was swiped at and knocked back by a hidden figure, only to find it was Mr. Fur. Oh, it's you? How did you find this place? Look, it's a long story, but how about you? I came to help you find the dragon egg. Supposedly, it's in the most secure point of this temple. Looking over, we saw the creeping staircase that led down into the island. Well, let's go. We ventured down into a large tunnel that was layered with saw blades. And at the end was a menacing tiki statue that began to activate. That can't be good. On days 53 to 56, we began to run down the tunnel as the tiki unleashed a barrage of elemental attacks. Fire, lightning, and boulders were thrown right at us. Ow! Look out! I was trying my best to get in close, but I also had to watch out for the saw blades. This is insane! You're telling me! While I struggled to push through the obstacles, Mr. Fur was fighting to keep up, and he wasn't looking too good. No! I used my webs to create a protective wall for him as I finally reached the pillar at the end. But because of this, it separated, and three tiki heads ran into attack. Get out of our sacred temple! Mr. Fur finally reached the end of the tunnel with me when the floor gave out from under us. Ah! We landed far below in a chamber with the dragon egg at its center. Yes, we made it. I went and picked up the egg, but instead of upgrading, a shadowy version of myself emerged from the darkness. So you wish to take the dragon egg? Do you? Who, who are you? The question is, what am I? A monster, a creature made just to destroy. I am you. He flew in to attack much faster than I could react. Ah! No, you're wrong. I'm not a monster. Yes, 
Keep lying to yourself. Zohar created you, and all he creates is destruction. You will never live a life where those around you don't fear you. You will never be looked at as anything more than a threat. He lunged back at me for another attack. Ah! I can't defend myself against this guy. Stop it. Just stop. Yes. Let your rage consume you. You will never be strong enough without letting it take control. You will never stop Zohar without it. He flew back again for another attack. I said, stop. A surge of rage filled me as I unleashed a deadly dragon breath, causing the shadowy form to drop down, defeated. Good. <laughs> Good. The figure faded away, and I was now upgraded into a stronger spider dragon. I gained five more hearts and had a new dragon breath attack. Yes, but the entire temple then began to shake. Come on, we need to get out of here now. On day 63 to 68, Mr. Fur and I returned to our base where we saw Wart. Oh, there you are. You're okay. Yeah. We are. I walked past him slowly into my home. Oh, you okay? No. That other version of me? He kind of had a point, right? Look, I, I was born from horrible ideas. And I was born to fuel and create a monster. Oh, whoa. Look, ever since I've known you, you've been trying to figure out who you are. But you've been answering that question all along. You aren't what you were created or born from but what you made of yourself. And that is a hero. Yeah, but everyone will always just see us as monsters. What if that never changes? You know, a friend once told me that it's never too late for someone to change, ever. Yeah, right. I looked over to the front of my base and saw the government agent from earlier. Hey, you made it. I had nowhere else to go. Well, let me get you a place to settle. I quickly built him his very own facility in our base. Thank you. Sincerely. Of course. Now, all that's left is the connected heart. The connected heart? Oh, that's not good. Wait, why? On day 69 to 73, I was following Mr. Fur as we were sneaking through Dr. Zohar's lab. Wait, what are we doing back here? It's dangerous. The last item you need, it lies beneath this lab. And it's a little complicated. We made it back into the room with the ingredient book. And in front of us was that ominous doorway I saw all that time ago. Wait, the connected heart, it's in there? Okay, wish me luck. He did as I entered the door, revealing a stairway that led deep under the laboratory. I then reached a basement room at the end of the stairway that was very eerie. Hello? Anyone here know about a connected heart? Suddenly, a bright light began to form in front of me, and in a blast, there was a spirit made of souls? A dragon spider thing? Spider dragon, actually. Sorry, we don't get many visitors down here. We? Wait, what are you? I am one of the many lost souls made from all of the spirits of Zohar's failed experiments. We all stay here where it's safe. The soul then gestured towards the empty floor and summoned a ghastly portal. I know why you are here. Come with me. On day 74 to 77, after I stepped through the portal, I fell into an otherworldly graveyard village. It was full of even more spirits from Zohar's past experiments. Who is that guy? The soul that was with me before rose up in the center of the village. My fellow lost souls, this visitor here seeks our connected heart. One of the other souls then rushed up to me. I sense darkness within you. 
I can see how badly your soul battles to decide the route your life should take. Is he really someone who can even handle our heart? Let us see. Whispers and chants filled the air as all of the souls in the village caused a walkway to reveal itself. I followed the lost soul to a forked path that split into two passageways. Two paths lie before you. And each could bring you to what you want. One shrouded in darkness, and the other bathed in light. Looking down the dark path, I saw that the connected heart, it's right there. I was about to rush down it, but I remembered Mr. Fur's words. You aren't what you were created or born from, but what you made of yourself. The darker path is always easier to go down but the light path is the right thing to do. I ran down the light path and far, far in the distance was the connected heart. On day 78 to 80, as I ran through the light tunnel, I heard a bunch of voices. Monster! What, what you did, you idiot? Now, dispose of the waste. No, no, stop! I knew I had to keep going, but I just kept getting hit back. The lost soul's voice then echoed through the tunnel. Pushing past these memories is no easy feat, but if you can hold the weight of these words, you can hold our heart. With each step, I pushed through the hurtful words, and with newfound strength, I remembered all the good memories. When I first saw you, I, I really thought you were a monster. But you're actually the complete opposite. It's never too late for someone to change. Yeah. But what you made of yourself, and that is a hero. They're right. I can be a hero. I have to try. I pushed past the heavy weight holding me back and finally grabbed the connected heart. Because of this, I was teleported back to the center of the graveyard village, surrounded by all of the lost souls. You have proven that you can carry all of our hearts within you. With that, we can finally rest and be in peace. I'm so sorry that Dr. Zohar brought you into this world only to kill you guys. It's okay now. We know we have chosen the right person to carry our power. With those final words, the spirits of the lost souls began to disappear and flow into me. Their power caused me to upgrade. I gained 10 more hearts and could now rush forward and slam into my enemies. Whoa, I did it. I know what I have to be. I am what I make myself. And I'm gonna prove this entire world just that. On days 86 to 90, I was leaving the area when I saw a new test testing site had been built up, and there was Dr. Zohar. My perfect vial. It's complete! Finally! What? No! No! He drank the vial, and this time transformed into a large, deadly dragon. His power was unmatched as he rained destruction down on the world. This was the deadly beast. That's why he merged me with a dragon. Suddenly, his attention snapped towards me. I spoke too loud. Ah, you here to see that I meant what I said? My experiment was a success, and soon the promise made to run the world will be full. Zohar blasted me from the sky, and in one hit, I was brought down to low hearts. Ah! His incredible amount of strength was too much for me. I don't know what to do. But then, Wart leapt in, knocking me under a tree. Ah! Wait, Wart? What are you doing? Doing what's right. Since the day I was created, I've only cared about myself. Only been selfish. But now, it's time to prove you right. People can change. Now, go! With that, Wart jumped out into the open to face Zohar alone. No, wait! Zohar noticed him and started to blast at him. Leave now! I reluctantly listened while a fire breath hit him from above. Ah! 
Uh, finally, a real purpose. On days 91 to 94, I safely made it back home. Bozo, thank goodness. Wait, where's Ward? He died, sacrificing himself just for me. I'm sorry. What do we do now? I'm not sure. I went and built up a memorial for Ward in his personal swamp. He may have lived part of his life in fear, but he shouldn't be remembered for that. He should be remembered for his courage and his selflessness. A reminder that we all have the power to change. Hello, I, I'm so sorry, but a crazy dragon was sighted in that town nearby. Do you think it's... Zohar, no. We have to stop him before it's too late. On days 95 to 99, I followed the path of destruction left by the scientist until it led me right back to the vegetables town he was raining down more flames onto its citizens burning everything ah, help us i flew into the chaos and took out a group of the ghouls that were attacking the veggie leader this dragon he's destroying everything fight men fight i charged towards the center of the town fighting back waves of ghouls with the help of the vegetables what? You really think that you can stop me? Zohar, stop this! Now! Never! This is my ultimate form! My perfect form! I fought through the last line and flew up to him on the center building. You should have died in my incinerator! You don't deserve a life! He unleashed an attack. But I dodged out of the way and used my newest ability, which missed him, but actually hit his potions, causing something to happen. All of the potions burst and began to change Zohar. What? What have you done to me? He morphed into a massive failed experiment, a real monster. On day 100, the newly mutated Zohar swung his massive arms wildly, trying to hit me out of the sky. I flew around the town, hitting him with everything I had. My perfect form ruined by a monster. You are the monster, Zohar, and I'm not gonna let you get away with any of this. We continued fighting as my attacks would burn away at him. After I kill you, I will turn the world into this mutation. You will see. I thought back to all of those good memories of Mr. Fur and Wart. I'm not going to let you. I won't. He swung again, aiming for a final hit. But I hit him head on with my dragon breath as he started to shrink down. With one final rush, I took down Dr. Zohar for good, and the world could now finally live in peace. On day one, I spawned in as a baby demon dragon. I watched my father in front of me, fighting the demon lord himself, the Lord of Darkness. It is time to finally place the demon's curse upon you. No. Never! Tad, what's going on? I quickly ran into battle, trying to help my father, but he quickly pushed me away and said, It's not safe for you here, son. Run as far away as you can. Remember, I love you. As my dad finished his sentence, the overlord used a special type of magical ability, which fully cursed my dad. No! How can I be of service, my lord? Kill the spare. He isn't needed. Yes, your majesty. My dad then immediately turned over to me and started to slowly walk closer. Uh, dad? He did his best and tried to attack me. Ah, uh, stop! My cursed dad began chasing me and I knew that I had to run away now. On day two, I was flying away as fast as I could with my father right on my tail. I tried my best to lose him, but since I was a baby, he was just too fast for me. He hit me with a strong chain attack and I couldn't get away. Oh no, I'm trapped. Oh, are you scared, little one? Don't you worry. I shall make your death a fast one. Just as I thought all hope was lost, my father was shot back by a powerful archangel. 
Whoa, who are you? The Archangel used incredible abilities to his advantage and started a fight off my father. He hit him extremely hard, which stunned him. Quick, Dragon. I can't hold him for long. He then waved his hands, which caused a tunnel to form nearby. Go, now! Follow the tunnel. Find the demon blood root at the Tree of Midnight. Once you do, it is important that you meet me back in the overworld. Good luck. And I knew that I didn't have a choice. Here goes nothing, Fozo. On day three, I made my way through the tunnel, full of fear. My dad, it's like his mind is under control. It didn't take long until I reached a clearing, which revealed a large courtyard. In the middle of it stood a tree much different than the rest. Is that the tree of midnight? I slowly approached it, looking for the demon root, when out of nowhere, I was hit with a fireball. Ah! What gifts? I turned around, only to see an elderly demon lady. Ah, so you've come here for the blood root. The odd lady then brought me over to the demon tree and gave it a hit, knocking down a demon root. Wait, you're going to help me? Correct. The Lord of Darkness is the ruler of the underworld and has managed to stay that way for eons because of the mind-controlling curse he spreads on his fierce competitors, your father being one of them. Now, pick up the blood root. I did as said, which caused something strange to happen. My body started to change, causing me to grow out my very own dragon claws, and I gained five more hearts. Because of this, I now had a very powerful dragon slash. Whoa, this item made me stronger? <laughs> Why, yes, I know you want to save your death, little one. And to be quite honest with you, I'm entertained by this. Good luck. Let's see if you have what it takes. On day four, I left the chapel with the blood root, knowing I needed to find a way to get to the overworld. How am I going to get there? No, I said place it to the left. What was that? I made my way over, only to see a large demon engineer outpost. In the center of it was a newly completed portal. Is that where I need to go? Well, well, well. Looks like there's a new demon. You are not allowed here, genius. Sorry, I didn't mean to. Actually, on second thought, if we were to have your demon scales, who knows how much we would be paid? Oh no! The demon engineers all started to rush in and attack me! Ah! They used incredible demon powers to their advantage. Thankfully though, I used my new dragon slash to help me counter their hits. I can tell they were really starting to get weak, but more of them started to come in. I have to think, fast! Wait, the portal! I ran as fast as I could and was able to jump right through! On day five, I made my way on the other side of the portal. Whoa, the skies are blue here? I looked around and everything felt so peaceful. Ah, a demon beast just came through a weird looking dumb portal! Kill it! I watched as countless villagers charged in with their swords. No, wait! They all swarmed in and started to fight me off. I used my new demon slash, but I knew deep down I didn't want to hurt them. Because of all the recklessness, I started to burn down all of the nearby wood inside of the village. Oh no, it's destroying everything. Oh, uh, Mayday, Mayday, quick, throw milk on the fire. I looked around in complete fear. What do I do? Just then, the Archangel himself teleported in and extinguished the entire village in a single move. Whoa! I see you found the demon root, Dragon, but you obviously have a lot to learn. On day six, the Archangel brought me far off inside the overworld until we reached the top of a mountain. This will be your new home. Wait a minute. Why? Why are you helping me? You're an angel and I am a demon. The Lord of Darkness has done nothing but grow stronger. If nothing is done to stop him, then his reign won't just stop inside the underworld. Well, look, as much as I want to stop him, I want to do what I can to save my dad. Which is why I had you get the first of five ingredients for the cure. Wait, did you say cure? Correct. You will need the blood root, the ice crystal, the heart of lost souls, the inferno bone, and the last one you'll know when you're ready. 
So if I find all five, I can save my father. And take down the Lord of Darkness. The Archangel then assigned me to build up my very own home. I went out and got enough materials to make myself a set of stone tools. Then from there, I was able to use them to build up a demon-themed dragon cave. Sweet! With it, I also made a room where I could hold each of the five curing items I will find on my journey. One down, four more to go. This place is coming together already. I looked over and noticed the Archangel built up his very own angel-themed house as well. Now that you're ready for the next step, I know the location of one more cured item, the Ice Crystal. Its location resides deep in the tundra with the Ice Skeleton Empire. Skeletons, huh? Well then, just point me in the right direction. On day seven, I followed the angel's directions deep inside the frozen tundra. All right, where is that crystal? Ah, what the? I turned over. Wait, an ice skeleton? Hey, I need your help. My help? <laughs> no, I need yours. If I can take down a demon dragon, then I will for sure get my sword back. Your sword? The ice skeleton then rushed in and started to attack. Then from afar, he had the ability to shoot ice at me. Ah, knock it off. Never. I fought back as hard as I could and slashed him. Hey, what did I do to you? My special, special Skullborn sword has been passed down from generations and is very special to me. My king, he took it, all because he doesn't think I'm worthy. He sees me as a coward, but if I took you down, then he would have nothing to say. I understand, but listen, maybe you can help me with something, and in return, I can help you get your sword back. I like where this is going. What did you have in mind? On day eight, the ice skeleton and I formed a perfect plan. This might just work. We entered his ice kingdom and I was his prisoner. Are you sure this will work? No, but it's worth a try. We then approached a large ice throne room and sitting on the end of it was the ice skeleton king himself. And is that? It is the ice crystal. What beast did you bring into my kingdom? Sire, I, I, I have bested it in combat to prove that I am no coward and worthy of that very sword you hold. I'm done with your shenanigans. You know what I think I'll do? I'll put both of you in the dungeons. Oh no. On days nine to 10, the ice skeleton king charged in and started to hit my new friend and I with massive strength. He dealt an insane amount of damage to both of us, but me and my new skeleton friend knew that we couldn't give up. We have to keep fighting. Let me help. Our hits were starting to pay off. I can tell that the king was starting to get low. No, no. And with one final hit, we were able to take him down. I think this belongs to you. Oh my, it feels so good to hold it again. Thank you, Fozo. You have no idea how much you helped me out. My name is Shard, and uh, oh, feel free to take that ice crystal. Thanks. I walked over and collected the ice crystal, causing my body to fully change. My small horns began to grow out, and I gained five more hearts. Now, I had an insane ability that allowed me to charge at my enemy with my demon horns. Sweet. Listen, is there any way I could come back with you? After all of this, I, I have nowhere else to go. Yeah, of course. On days 11 to 12, I started to bring Shard back with me to base. It didn't take long until I noticed something wasn't right. There were large cracks spread out through the floor that looked like led straight down to the underworld. Ugh, this doesn't look good. Out of nowhere, the entire area began to shake. What's going on? <laughs> How did that puny dragon get away? I can't let him ruin my plan. I can't. So, what do you want us to do? You speak only when spoken to. Go, spread among the overworld, and do not come back until you bring me his head. Sir, yes, sir. Soon, my people, this domain shall spread fully throughout the overworld, and I shall be the ruler of everything. On days 13 to 14, I brought my ice skeleton friend back home with me. Wow, I 
love it here, but I think it's a little too hot. Right. With his help, we both went to work and were able to make him his very own icy tower to live in. There you go. I hope you like it. Like it? I love it. After that, I went to my storage room to place my ice crystal down. There we go. Two down, three more to go. Just as I finished, I found a soul wandering through our base. What the? My home, our people. Ugh. Oh my goodness. What's going on? On days 15 to 16, I followed the soul's path until I reached a small town being under attack by the demon forces. Oh no, they made it here? Leave us alone! Never! We must become stronger for our lord! I watched as the demons completely destroyed the souls, which caused them to grow stronger. I wanted to save them, but deep down, I knew that there were way too many of those demons to take on myself. Someone help me! Far off on the other side of town lied a small, innocent soul. Oh no, I have to save him. I flew over to the group, which caught the demon's attention. They began to shoot out deadly attacks at me, but thankfully, I was able to dodge most of them. Hey, I'm here to help! Uh, quick! Follow me! You don't have to tell me twice. Together, the little soul and I made it to a mineshaft entrance, and the soul quickly shut it behind us, cutting us off from the demons. We will get you! Find a way inside! Now! On day 17 to 18, the soul and I went deep through the creepy mineshaft. Hey! Who even are you? This here town is a ghost town, literally. And I think those demons came here searching for one of our ghostly items, the heart of lost souls. The third item that I need. They probably don't want me to have it. Yeah, but little do they know, they aren't in the right place. Wait, really? Do you know where it is? I do, but why would I tell you? Look, I helped you escape. I have other things to worry about. The little soul then zoomed off. Hey, wait! I chased it deep within the caves. He led me through vast tunnels until I finally cornered him at a dead end. Look, I just want to talk. I don't have time to talk. Those demons, they separated me from my father. I need to find him before it's too late. Well, maybe I can help you out with that. Look, I'll help you find your father. And in return, you will tell me where I can find the heart of lost souls. Do we have a deal? On days 19 to 21, the soul led me outside an alternative exit. Okay, now where would those demons take them? If he's still alive. I then looked nearby and noticed a trail of fire and the underworld. The demons had to have gone this way. Come on! The soul and I ventured off following the path until we finally reached a large overworld demon outpost. Is that my father? But the rest of the souls in cages. Thanks to them, we know where the heart of the lost souls is. Oh no, that's not good. I have to find it before they do. It wasn't long until the little soul got excited and flew off. Wait, I followed him and we stopped nearby a cage. That's my dad, he's alive. We have to be quiet or else we're gonna both be caught. Just then, I looked over at my dad and noticed him placing fire on top of weird pillars. Because of this, the Lord of Darkness himself was summoned. You better have good news. We are close to finding my son. We have already taken down a soul civilization in the progress. I do not care about some stupid souls. I want that demon dragon down before he is too powerful. Do you not understand? I cannot be stopped. My mission must go on. In time, every living being will be of the demon kind, and I shall rule them all. That doesn't sound so good. Okay, time to break your dad out. The little soul flew over and broke its father out. Now, let's get out of here before those demons find out. On days 22 to 26, the souls and I escaped the demon's outpost. I'm so glad you're okay, Dad. Hey, a deal is a deal. You said you can show me where the heart of souls is. Yeah, as promised, I will show you. Follow me. The soul led me far away into a desert biome. 
far off inside of it was a tiny rock? You're saying the item is in this? No, only those who know the soul melody can access the location. Step back. I did. And the little soul began to sing a melody. Open like a soul. Open become foe. The entire area then started to shake, which caused a large pyramid to appear in front of us. Whoa. Hey, if you guys need a safe place to stay, then you can come back home and live with me if you want. The souls agreed and flew off. Now, time to head inside. On days 27 to 29, I made my way deep inside the pyramid. It didn't take long for me to realize that the demons had already been through it. The walls and floors all looked demonic and were filled with lava. This isn't good. I kept walking through until I ran into a group of them. Uh, hi? Attack! The demons all started to attack me. Ah! But thanks to my new Dragon Rush upgrade, I was able to fend them off. I took down all but one. I must tell the others. No, get back here. I chased the demon through the pyramid hallways and was able to take him down. Aha! Upon his death, I was able to spot a torn piece of paper far off in another room. Huh, what's this? My attention got quickly caught, though, because the entire area started to rumble. Oh, no. What's going on? On days 30 to 32, I followed the rumbling throughout the hallways. It's coming from over here. Just then, I reached a much larger room, and far in the center of it held the heart of lost souls. Yes! I quickly started to make my way over, but then was blasted aside by a soul guardian? A demon. No, you are not worthy of my heart. Wait, listen. But the guardian didn't say anything else and immediately began to attack me. You are nothing but evil and shall be disposed of. I'm on your side. I'm trying to stop the demons. The soul guardian didn't listen though. And I knew that I had to fight back harder. I did. And I can tell that he was really starting to get tired. With one last hit, the soul guardian admitted defeat. You're, you're not going to kill me? I, I thought... You thought I was what? A demon? Wanting nothing but harm and destruction? Well, think again. I decide who I am. A demon not restricted by its own species? That I can respect very well. The heart is yours. Thank you. I walked over and picked up the heart of lost souls. This caused me to gain five hearts and my body started to change. Fiery cracks spread out throughout my scales and I now had an amazing ability to shoot out dragon breath. Sweet. On days 33 to 35, I made it back to base. Hey, you guys made it. Yeah, this place is lovely. Well, it's about to get a whole lot better. From there, I went out and got the right amount of materials to make the Soul family their very own home to stay in. This is amazing. Thank you so much. No problem. I knew I was just going to get bigger and bigger. So I also made my dragon den much larger as well. Now that is for a full size dragon. Bozer, I have returned. Is everything okay? No, not at all. My people know that the demons have made it to the overworld. They are not pleased. I know this isn't good, but hey, I wanted to show you something. I then threw the angel over the piece of paper I found inside of the museum. Any clue of what this is? Oh my, I know exactly what this is. This is the first half of the map that leads straight to the dragon catacombs. What's so special about this place? Oh, oh, I know. A very special type of bone is said to be held there. Wait, the Inferno Bone, the fourth item for the cure. I don't know where it is, but I think I may know how you can get your hands on the rest of that map you have. Quick, Fozo, follow me. On days 36 to 39, Shard took me far away from our base and into a deep forest of some sorts. Where are you taking me? You'll see. It wasn't long until we reached a hidden village owned by elves? 
huh? Oh boy, oh boy, what do we have here, huh? A little old demon dragon here to hurt us? No, he's with me. I've come to talk to your elder. Follow me then, and don't try anything funny, you little monster. We were taken over to the elder elf, who was looking down on a planning table. I knew you would come here, dragon. I sensed it with my ancient magic. Well, I'm here because I heard you guys had something that I need. The rest of my map. Ah, yes, we do. But why would we give it to someone like you, huh? For all we know, you could be a demon spy. Well, I'm not. I do suppose there's a way you can prove it. Word has spread that the demon kind have evolved since their presence here. Wait, what? They've gotten stronger? Correct. And not too far from here lies a new demon camp. Take it down, and then I shall give you your map. On days 40 to 44, the elves escorted me all the way to the demon camp. Just don't get your old little self killed, ha <laughs> ha! I watched, and just like the elder elf said, the demon forces had evolved. I have to take them down. I flew in and alerted them. The dragon, get him! Before, I was able to fight off against them very easily. But now, they were able to fly up just like me. These demons were definitely stronger. But I knew if I wanted to save my father, I had to be even better. With all of my powers combined, I was able to best all of the demons. Yes! <laughs> it was a trap. <laughs> What? Out of nowhere, lightning shot from the skies, revealing none other than the Lord of Darkness himself. I have finally found you. You, what you've done to my father, to countless demons, it's wrong. Silence. You have no right to speak to me. You are nothing but a waste of space and you should have been dead to begin with. But now, I'll finally make sure that it happens. The Lord of Darkness started to attack. He was very strong and shot out very powerful demon attacks right at me. Ah! I knew deep down I was not strong enough to face him. He's too strong. One more hit and I'm done for. Just as I thought all hope was lost, the Elder Elf teleported in using his ancient magic and teleported both of us out. No! No! On days 45 to 47, I was teleported deep inside the elf village. Oh, what happened? So, it is true, demon dragon. You are really good after all. Yeah, that's what I've been trying to show you guys. Follow me. I followed the elf, going deep under their elf village, until we reached a vault room. Inside of it, held the map. Wait, I could just have it? Yes, we know of the Lord of Darkness and his horrible plans. If he gets away with them, he won't. I promise. From there, I went over and picked up the map. This caused both of the pieces to magically form together as one. Sweet! Listen here, all of us in the overworld are rooting for you, Demon Dragon. It's time to show them that not all demons are bad after all. On days 48 to 52, I roamed far out throughout the world until I finally reached a wide entryway that led down deep inside the sacred dragon catacombs. I quickly looked around, but soon realized that there was no way inside. All there was was a strange crack carved in the wall. What am I supposed to do with this? Just then, a large knight ran up to me. Hey! Who are you? No, who are you? An intruder? An intruder? You are the one here who isn't a dragon at a dragon catacomb. The knight became furious and began to attack me. Ah! He had a powerful axe. With every slam, he sent the ground rumbling. Ah! I then realized he had a weak spot. His back! Okay, Fozo. Now! I perfectly timed my attack and was able to dragon dash right into his back. This caused the knight to fall over and admit defeat. Yes! Because of this, he dropped his large axe. 
wait a second. Using it, I was able to slam it into the crack on the wall, which opened up the main entryway inside. On days 53 to 56, I went deep into the dragon catacombs until I reached a very large opening. Whoa, a graveyard? Where do I even start searching? I roamed around looking for the infernal bone until I finally reached a large pit inside of the graveyard. Oh my, there were at least hundreds of floating bones inside of it. The infernal bone has to be here. I try to pick one up, but because of this, the bone transformed into a large, scary bone serpent. Ah! It bit me, which dealt a ton of damage. Wait, so every time I pick up the wrong bone, I get hurt? Well, great. How am I supposed to find the right one? So, you're looking for the infernal bone, are you? Yeah, I am. And who are you supposed to be? I am a bone wolf. I've lived in this horrible place for way, way too long. But I think I may know a way I can help you. Only to help me in return. Okay, wolf. You have yourself a deal. On days 57 to 59, my new bone wolf friend brought me throughout the catacombs far off in another area. Where is it you're taking me? I'm taking you here. This is the fiery pit of Inferno, sent to grant the user with the vision of the flame. Maybe with this vision, I could see which bone the infernal bone is. I decided to dive straight in, which caused something to happen. My eyes turn into larger flames. Whoa, I think it worked. Yeah, it definitely did. Now, what can I do for you? Well, you see, I've been trapped in this cave for what feels like an eternity. My only request is if I can somehow leave this place with you. I don't want to be underground anymore. Oh. Of course. Together, the wolf and I went back to the pile of bones. Now, which one is the inferno one? Something started to happen with my vision, and it caused the inferno bone to reveal itself amongst the pile. Aha! There it is. I went over and picked it up, which caused my body to change. I gained five more hearts and now had full-sized wings. Because of this, I now had a new power, which allowed me to trap my enemies with a demon chain. This is awesome. On days 60 to 63, I brought the bone wolf back with me to my home. Oh my, it's been so long since I've seen the skies. I quickly went off and got the right amount of materials to make him his very own home. I even made the roof out of glass so he can truly enjoy the new atmosphere. Oh, this is perfect. Thank you. No problem. I then went over and placed the fourth item down on the pedestal. Just one more. I'm almost done. Just then a large explosion sounded off what was that i went out to go see what was going on and it was none other than my father hello son on day 64 to 68 i watched as my father and countless demons swarmed my base no leave me alone i knew that i had to go in and help I flew in and started to use my dragon breath to my advantage. This alone took out all of the nearby demons, but more and more of them just kept coming. Thankfully, my new bone friend jumped in and started to fend them off. While they were distracted with each other, my dad dropped down right in front of me. Dad, please, it's me, your son. No. You are my mission! My dad then leapt in and tried to kill me! Ah! Please stop! I will never stop until you're dead! But, dad! Your dad is gone! He is dead! No! I don't believe that! I charged in, and my father and I began to fight! His attacks hurt me a lot, and I knew he had way more experience than me, but I had to try! Then, out of nowhere, an idea sparked within me! I used my new demon chain ability and trapped my dad with it! Oh, let me out! Bozo, it looks like you've contained your father. Yeah, but it won't hold him for long. It looks like you're finally ready to get inside the light realm and obtain the final item, the heart of an angel. On days 69 to 73, I was teleported out of my base. Ah, where am I? I looked around and there was nothing but infinite skies and a bunch of clouds. So it's true, the Archangel wasn't lying. 
If you actually showed up. Uh, who are you? Who am I? What am I? None of it matters. Now follow me. I followed the mysterious angel throughout the light realm until we reached the edge of a cloud. Far off in the distance was a huge arena. It looks so sacred. That's because it is. That right there is the Forbidden Island, and it holds the very item that you seek. Knowing this, I flew off towards it, but as soon as I tried to enter inside, I was shocked and sent back by a huge burst of energy. Ah, what happened? Uh, if you stayed back and listened, you would know that those of the demon kind are forbidden. Well, come on. There has to be a way I can get inside. Well, I actually do know of a way, and it involves you having to get rid of your inner demon. On day 74 to 77, I followed the angel guard to a weird type of arena. What are we doing here? I'm not like the other demons. I don't want destruction and chaos. That is the only reason we are here. If you were anything like the others, you wouldn't even get this opportunity. Now, enter the Crucible! I continued inside when suddenly thunder struck and the sky started to change color. In a flash of smoke, another vision of me appeared, but he was different. You are a disgrace. You have brought shame on your entire kind. That's not true. I'm doing what's right. What's right? You don't know what you're talking about. My inner demon then started to attack me. He was really strong and had a lot of the same attacks as I did. How am I supposed to defeat myself? You coward! This is the end for you! My demon half blasted me with a powerful attack and knocked me backwards. I knew you were weak the moment you betrayed your kind. No, you are the weak one. I gathered all of my strength. This is for my father! Ah! The difference between us is that I have something worth fighting for. Well done, Fozo. Well done. On day 78 to 80, I went back to the Forbidden Island, but this time I was able to enter. Sweet! I walked into a large arena and there were three ancient angels standing on platforms above me. Then I looked closer and behind them was the angel heart. A demon? What are you doing here? Look, I know I'm a demon, but I'm here for the right cause. I want to see the end of the Lord of Darkness. A demon? Doing something selfless? <laughs> well, that is unheard of. All demons are the purest evil. No one should even be allowed in here, let alone receive the heart of an angel. Now leave at once. I am not leaving without that heart. Fine, have it your way. Oh no. On days 81 to 85, one of the ancient angels swooped down and began attacking me. No demon has ever stepped foot on this island. Now that you have, you will not live to tell the tale. The angel was strong and his light attacks were very powerful. How? How can a demon withstand this? I am not like the other demons. That is what I was trying to tell you. With each attack, I was wearing down the angel until it was time for the final blow. Do it. Finish me. Show me who you really are. No, I'm not going to kill you. I already told you I'm not with the demons. I'm trying to stop the Lord of Darkness, and I need that heart to break his curse. Maybe he is worthy of the heart. No true demon would have been able to survive here in the realm of light. Come here, take the heart, and be warned. If used for the wrong reasons, the wrath of the realm of light will fall upon you. I went up to the angel's heart and grabbed it. Then my chest started pounding and I could feel a warmth pour over my body. I got a core of light and gained five more hearts. The power swelled inside of me and all of my attacks became stronger. Then I tried my new ability. I could shoot a light ray from my chest. Awesome. You truly are good. Go save your father and defeat the Lord of Darkness. 
On days 86 to 90, I was teleported back to my base. Whoa. Okay, now to collect all the materials. I quickly went inside and gathered all of the ingredients for the potion. I then flew over and saw that my father was being held in a cell. I'm guessing you made this, huh? Bozo, you've done it. I wasn't sure if you'd make it in the realm of light. Look, I have everything we need. Now, how do we save my dad? Save me. Save me from who? You are the one that needs to be saved. Hey, give me the ingredients. I handed over the ingredients, and the archangel mixed them in a vial, casting a spell on it. It's ready. I took it and threw it on my father. Don't you dare. Don't. Oh! Fo, Ozo? Dad? Dad, are you there? Son, son, I am so sorry. I don't know what happened. I lost myself in the curse, and I couldn't even think my own thoughts. It's okay. The curse is gone now. Thank you for saving me, my boy. You're all grown up. Well, it's not over yet. The Lord of Darkness is trying to take the overworld for himself, and he is using his curse to destroy everything that opposes him. Fozo, we will stop him. On days 91 to 94, my father and I walked throughout my home. You? You did all of this? Wow, son. Yeah, every day since you've been cursed, I've been out trying to save you, Dad. And in doing so, I think I've been showing the world that not all demons are bad. Your son, he's a hero. From there, I looked upon everyone that I helped along my journey and knew what we all had to do. It's time we fight! Just as I finished my sentence, far off in the distance, a large underworld ravine formed, and from it, countless demons emerged. Oh no. His plan. He's gonna take over the overworld. The Lord of Darkness emerged from the ravine himself. <laughs> On days 95 to 99, my fellow friends and I rush into battle against the Lord of Darkness. Change! There were a lot of demons, but with all of us working together, we were able to really put up a fight against them. Take this! Way to go, Dad! It's good to have you back! Just then, the Lord of Darkness casted a spell and summoned a large demon arena over the battle. Bozo! We must stop the Lord of Darkness now! It's us or him! You're right! As my people were fighting his army, I looked over and saw him there watching, waiting for me. On day 100, I flew and landed on top of the arena. It's over! No, it will never be over! I must stay the ruler of the underworld! Not if I have anything to say about it! The two of us rushed in and clashed in the center of the arena! He was extremely fast with his movements and used his speed to his advantage, but with my newly found skills and strength, I was really putting up a fight against him! You should have known better than to mess with us dragons! Uh, this can't be! No! I kept charging in, and he was attacking back, but looking weaker and weaker! No! No! The Lord of Darkness was down, and now both worlds can live in peace.